So again, welcome to Recruiting in Ivy League and most selective colleges. I'm going to be your recruiting coach um, holding tonight's session. My name is Coach Greg. Um, I am one of two ice hockey recruiting coaches here at NCSA. Uh, did my graduate school uh, degree at Georgetown University. Uh, played some undergraduate hockey at Michigan State. Um, so with that being said, we're going to get started here and talk a little bit about Ivy League recruiting and most selective colleges. So the schools in the Ivy League, uh, there are eight of them. We have Brown in Providence, Rhode Island, Columbia in New York City, New York, Cornell, Ithaca, New York, Smith in Hanover, New Hampshire, Harvard in Cambridge, Massachusetts, Percy Penn in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Princeton University in Princeton, New Jersey, and Yale in New Haven, Connecticut. League map, all of these schools as well as the most selective colleges um, that we'll get into in a little bit later in our conversation tonight are predominantly located in the northeastern United States. Um, you know, in all of those, New York, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, all those northeastern states. And here you can find and locate all of those um, Ivy League schools on the map here tonight. About the Ivy League, uh, for those of you who don't know too much about the Ivy League, um, it was founded in 1954. It's uh, also been called and referred to as the Ancient Eight or simply the Ivies. Um, there are an average of 35 varsity teams at each school, and seven of the eight schools were founded in America's colonial period. Um, Cornell was founded just after the American Civil War. Uh, so some pretty cool history facts there. Um, there are only eight Ivy League schools known as the Ivies or the Ancient Eight, um, an average of 35 varsity teams, and that's total between men and women there um, at those schools. And uh, pretty cool how those schools were founded um, during the America's colonial period. So according to the news and world ranking reports of 2016, um, here are the eight Ivy League schools and where they are ranked Amer among America's best colleges. Princeton being number one, they've been number one for quite a while. Um, Harvard as number two being in that spot and number three, Yale as well being in that spot for quite a while. Uh, Columbia's at number five, University of Penn or Penn is uh, number eight, Dartmouth, Olympia, yeah, Brown at number 14, and Cornell would be number 15. So um, all within the top 15, um, so some pretty, pretty great academic as well as uh, athletic schools um, in the top 15 to make up those Ivies. Why Ivy? Um, so Ivy have had a long-standing history of, you know, a, a different sort of culture being the cream of the crop for those students that have um, high, high academic grades that, you know, are fortunate enough to attend those universities. Um, come with a long-standing tradition. Um, they haven't really wavered too far from what they've been able or their, their teaching methods um, in the past. Connections. Um, usually those Ivy League schools, you have, you know, a long list and a long history of connections from those schools um, and are able to build off of those connections in the future. Um, your experience is, is second to none academically as well as athletically. Um, you know, the sports and the history and the academics that they have at those schools are second to none. So a little bit about the application and the admissions information. Um, this is kind of the bulk and the, probably the most important part of our session here tonight as Ivy League admissions and applications um, and the way that recruiting done is a little bit different in the Ivy Leagues versus the rest of the um, collegiate population. Um, so the application process for Ivy League schools will include the following. Um, you must uh, upload an official transcript. It's 
pretty much the most important part. Um, they want to make sure that you have the grades to get into those particular schools. Um, you must uh, upload your standardized tests, ACT, SAT scores, um, high, high school teacher evaluations. Those, uh, those uh, schools want to know what type of student you are in the classroom. Um, you know, do you focus in class? Are you a, a standout guy? Um, or a girl, you comedian in class, things of that nature. High school counselor recommendation, uh, again, what kind of person you are. Uh, upload two essays, usually about interests, experiences, and activities. Um, and then there's usually an alumni in interview as well. Um, it's not mandatory, but it certainly is encouraged um, and can help you, uh, you know, get into those schools. Um, got the application deadlines for this upcoming school year as well. Not sure if we're going to be having or if we have any 2017 or 2018 grads in the class tonight. Um, 2017, obviously, those de deadlines would already be passed. So more along the lines for those 2018 students that are looking to get in. Um, application deadlines, Brown, Columbia, Dartmouth, Harvard, and Princeton. Their application deadline is January 1st. Yale and Cornell application deadline is January 2nd. And Penn, their application deadline is January 5th. Now, those are all of the deadlines for general application or just general admission. Um, the application admission for a few of the schools, there are a different, there's some different names, early decision versus early action. Um, Brown, Columbia, Cornell, Dartmouth, Penn, and Princeton are all early decision. Early action for Yale and Harvard. Early admission deadlines for all of the Ivy, that includes all eight is November 1st. Keep those deadlines in mind as they are much earlier than a lot of the other universities that are out there. So application and admission info. Uh, we can get into this a little bit deeper as well, but usually in the recruiting process you'll receive a likely letter, which is a way for a coach to let you know that you are close in the admissions process. Um, coaches can, you know, like you and want you and re being recruiting you, but everything in terms of your application and acceptance to that school must go through the admissions office before they can sign off on bringing you on board. Want to make sure that your academic standards um, meet to the requirements. So the Ivy League is the only Division One conference in the nation that imposes lead-wide academic standards for recruited athletes. Um, they look mainly AP and honors courses on your transcript, um, all A's and B's on that transcript, GPAs above 3.5 and above. 10% uh, in your class. Some of them want top 5% in your class as well. Um, so just kind of be be uh, cognizant of that. Um, at least a minimum of a 25 on the ACT. Keep in mind this is for athletes. Um, so want to make sure you have high GPA paired with some high academic scores as well. Uh, 1250 on the two-part SAT or 1800 on the three-part SAT. They also look for well-rounded student athletes as well. Um, so if you're a student athlete that, you know, focuses on just school and your perspective sport, um, that can be something that doesn't help you stand out from the rest of the applicants. So make sure you're getting involved in some, some extracurricular activities, you know, playing a second sport, um, joining in clubs, you know, things like running for class president or or class office, um, a lot of volunteer time, things of that nature can help you stand out on those applications and help you through the admissions process. So uh, one question that you all might be asking yourself this evening is, are there any athletic scholarships in the Ivy League or the Ivies? So there are no athletic scholarships at all.
Hey guys, for that, my phone decided to cut out in the middle of our class this evening, so I do apologize for the delay there. Uh, but I was uh, saying that there are no athletic scholarships in the Ivy League. Um, all of the opportunities in terms of money come in the form of financial aid. Um, these are all need-based admissions. Don't necessarily read into the sticker price or that that large tuition cost that typically um, comes with these Ivy Leagues as they are pretty um, great schools. While the Ivy League does, colleges have some of the lowest acceptance rates, usually I think they're about 5 to 10 or 11 percent in terms of acceptance rates right now um, over, the, over all eight schools. Um, they also have some of the most generous financial aid policies um, out of any university. Uh, this is an excerpt that's actually taken from the Yale admissions site. Um, so if you are considering Yale, please do not hesitate to apply because you fear the cost will exceed your family's needs. Yale College admits students on the basis of academic and personal promise and without regard to their ability to pay. Once is admitted, Yale meets 100% of that student's demonstrated financial need. All aid is need-based. This policy helps to ensure that Yale will always be accessible to talented students from the widest possible range of backgrounds. And that's from Yale.edu. Um, so that's a pretty promising and pretty exciting thing that, you know, just because these, these uh, universities and colleges have such a high sticker price, um, they do want these these institutions to be financially affordable to those student athletes that you know have the grades and are able to handle the rigors of the curriculum there. Um, so like I said before, don't look into that sticker price so much that there are financial aid options available. To kind of recap, um, Ivy League tonight. Listen to those stereotypes. I know a lot of the Ivy League schools get, uh, you know, certain stereotypes and certain stigmas of them. Um, you know, don't listen to those. You know, they certainly, if you have the grades um, and, and have aspirations to go to an Ivy League school, um, you know, certainly apply. The hardest part is getting into those universities as they have such a low acceptance rate, somewhere around 5 to 11 or 10 percent there. Um, and they have great financial packages overall. So don't look into that sticker price. Um, you know, it can be obtainable through financial aid packages for you. Yeah. Um, I know uh, the second part of our class here tonight was talking a little bit more about those other high academic schools. Um, so the, uh, the New England Small College Athletic Conference, also known as NESCAC, um, is the, the, the conference that has the highest outside of the Ivy League schools, and oftentimes these are harder to get into than some of the Ivy League schools in terms of what their requirements, grade point, and um, standardized testing-wise. Um, and these schools all on here this evening are all Division three schools predominantly um, located up in the northeastern U U.S. Um, so we have Amherst in Amherst, Massachusetts, Bates in Lewiston, Mass, or Lewiston Maine, Bowdoin in Brunswick, Maine, Cooley in Waterville, Maine, College in New London, Connecticut, Hamilton College in Clinton, New York, Mary in Middlebury, Vermont, Trinity College in Hartford, Connecticut, Tufts University in Medford, Mass, Wesleyan in Middletown, Connecticut, and Williams College in Williamstown, Massachusetts. Um, NESCAC was founded in 1971, often referred to as the Little Ivies. Um, they have 26 sports, 13 men and 13 women at these universities. Uh, they do not offer any sort of official visit. Those would be all on your own, um, your own nickel and your ability to get to that school to visit. Um, Off-campus recruiting is not allowed. Each school can determine or will determine their own methods for handling athletic recruits and recruiting. Um, and there are many multi-sport multi athletes. Um, a friend of mine who went to Middlebury and was a multi-sport athlete in hockey and soccer, um, and he said that this was 
was a pretty normal thing at those particular universities um, as they are smaller uh, the seasons off times do not overlap for a lot of those different sports. Um, so NESCAC conference, NESCAC conference is uh, the cream of the crop when it comes to uh, high educational institutions outside of the Ivies and oftentimes have more strenuous, um, more strenuous, in, excuse me, more strenuous application requirements than the Ivies do. So if you have any further questions, um, please feel free to contact us here at NCSA at 877-845-6272. You can also email us your questions at recruitinghelp.ncsasports.org. Uh, with that being said, I will be sticking around for about 10, 15 minutes to answer any questions that you might have. Um, so. Please feel free to type in those questions into the uh, chat box or the question and answer box.